Happy holidays, everybody! If you're wondering what's going on here, this is all thanks to my lovely fellow YouTuber, Chris O'Brien. Over on Twitter, Chris pitched a Secret Santa-type project where content creators assign each other matches to discuss. Uh, little did he know that a similar idea has existed in forums past uh, under the name Secret Santo, which we are liberally borrowing here. So credit to whoever came up with the Secret Santo name in the past. My match came from none other than Blair, or as they're better known on YouTube, Pro Wrestling Outsider. That's why today we're going to be looking at their pick for me, Trevor Lee versus Brad Attitude from CWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling in 2016. Let's get into it. I feel like if you're a viewer on my channel, there's a decent chance that you've heard of CWF Mid-Atlantic in the past. If not, then allow me to provide a brief overview. Please take note that while I did check out CWF now for this project, and even before at its peak, I'm far from the most knowledgeable fan about this promotion's run. CWF Mid-Atlantic was a small indie promotion that gained prominence in the late 2010s via their CWF Worldwide YouTube show, which would broadcast their events. There's a lot of fun talent that's come through CWF Mid-Atlantic's doors through the years, including Cedric Alexander, Darius Lockhart, Eric Royal, Roy Wilkins, it even in CWF Mid-Atlantic that I first discovered Dominic Guarini. Let's be entirely honest though, the reason that CWF Mid-Atlantic became a destination promotion for its fans was Trevor Lee. His over three-year reign as the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion became one of indie wrestling's best-kept secrets between 2016 and 2019. As much fun as Trevor was in places like PWG and Impact Wrestling, the people in the know will tell you that his best work came in CWF Mid-Atlantic. The thing about Trevor's reign in the company at that time is that it was big in pretty much every sense of the word. Beyond just holding the belt for over 1,000 days, his matches were massive in the most literal sense. Trevor wrestled long. He famously won the championship from Roy Wilkins in a 104-minute match that's an exercise in trying to indulge and manage excess all at once. Major Trevor Lee CWF Mid-Atlantic title matches often went far beyond the 30-minute mark, and what's impressive about this is just how well he made those matches work for the most part. The match we're looking at today comes at the tail end of Trevor's first year as champion. It's against CWF Mid-Atlantic mainstay Brad Attitude, and it's taking place at CWF's last major event of 2016, Battlecade X7. Honestly, if you want to know the context for this match, CWF Mid-Atlantic's got you covered. On their channel, alongside the full match for free, is a rather comprehensive hype video montage that recaps everything you need to know about the upcoming title match, plus a little extra for the completionists too. Seriously, it's a 45 minute hype recap, you're covered if you just watch it, and I highly recommend that you do before going into the match itself. There's context here that you really need in order to enjoy the match. That being said, allow me to run you through the most significant bullet points. Brad Attitude's second reign as CWF Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion was ended when Trevor Lee eliminated him from a six-way elimination match. Trevor himself would not come out victorious at the end though, with the title instead going to Roy Wilkins. In the aforementioned 104-minute championship match, Brad Attitude would provide an assist to Trevor by blocking an interference from the coach at ringside, allowing the referee to count the fall on Trevor's victory. Several months later, after a classic title defense pitting Trevor against contemporary and friend Andrew Everett, Brad would come out to congratulate the two young wrestlers with some beers. 
It turned out to be a ruse, however, as he instead ambushes both wrestlers, culminating in him smashing a beer bottle into the reigning champion's head. From there, Brad Attitude would wage a psychological game of cat and mouse with Trevor Lee over the preceding months. He'd show up on cards where Trevor wasn't advertised and call out the champion. He'd attack Trevor's close friends within the company, even attempting to cut off Trevor's hair. When his attempt at the haircut was thwarted, however, he took it out on referee Robbie Walsh, cutting his hair instead. All of this backs Trevor into a blind rage, which makes Trevor agree to wrestle Brad Attitude for the title under any stipulations that he wants. And so, Brad chooses a match at Battlecade X7 with the following rule set. <sighs> I've been racking my brain nonstop trying to think of which stipulation to pick for our match at Battlecade. You've went crazy with some of the best wrestlers in the world for 45 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. I think I've got a good idea and I think you're gonna like it. So our match at Battle K, get this, will be a firm 30 minute time limit. And also, if you can't beat me within those 30 minutes, you will forfeit the Mid-Atlantic Championship to me. <laughs> I know we're gonna have a war it's been building up for a year. And the only way to do this, the only way to be fair, is to make it no disqualification, no rule, for me. <laughs> I can't be disqualified, but you can. And if you do anything to get yourself disqualified in that match, you forfeit the Mid-Atlantic Championship to me. <laughs> That brings us to December 30, 2016. The deck is stacked against the champion. He must win a clean match against the challenger within 30 minutes or else he loses the title. Meanwhile, the challenger has his pick of any tactic he wants, plus the clock is on his side. As far as gimmicks go, it's some of the most overloaded you can get without getting into DiBiase Duggan territory. It's another show of CWF's tendency towards a form of maximalism in the main event scene. But again, this promotion acquits itself by making the absolute best of these maximalist elements. Through the course of the match, every single significant story beat introduced in the feud and by the stipulation gets paid off. To open the match, Brad Attitude tries to taunt Trevor into getting himself disqualified by offering him a beer bottle to crack on his head. Trevor's too smart for that though and just unleashes an incredibly satisfying beating on the challenger instead. Attitude also spends much of the match just being a general bastard, using weapons and chicanery at every turn to try to get the advantage. My favorite moment from him might be this early chair shot where he swings the edge of the chair right into Trevor's face. It just looks rough and gruesome. Strong stuff. The beer bottle comes back again late in the match when Brad tries to use one to attack Trevor. Instead, Trevor kicks it away and then stomps Brad's hand into the shattered glass. In a perfect example of the rule of threes, the beer bottle comes back one final time for the finish, where everything that's been set up in the months prior comes full circle. Early in the match, the original referee gets knocked out by a wayward Trevor Lee kick. In a nice callback towards the end of the match, it's a Brad Attitude kick that ends up knocking down the second referee. What this leads to is Brad Attitude having a pinfall on Trevor Lee, which brings out Robbie Walsh, who refuses to count the pin. As vengeance for cutting his hair, Walsh also gets in a low blow and turns a blind eye to Trevor Lee getting the climactic bottle shot in on Brad for the three count and the win. Even some of this match's most ardent advocates aren't quite in love with that finish and I can't help but agree. Walsh refusing to count Trevor's shoulders down feels right given Brad's previous attack, but the low blow maybe is just a step too far given that it basically sets up Trevor's entire win. 
I also wish there was something just a little neater about Walsh ignoring the bottle shot at the end. Maybe something as simple as just turning his back before it happens could have improved it, but these are very minor gripes. All of this can be attributed to the wonderfully purposeful booking that CWF Mid-Atlantic put behind this match. But what I really want to highlight now is Trevor Lee's performance. My god is Trevor Lee fantastic in this. I love how his performance suits the circumstances of the match so well. With the abbreviated time limit, Trevor doesn't have the comfort of being able to come in and work a strategically focused and sound match. At the same time, the feud has been so heated that that's not what Trevor wants to do anyway. As such, Trevor focuses on being a righteous ass kicker for much of this. It's that emotion that gives us some of the best moments in the match. For example, when Trevor Lee's able to grab his signature STF on Brad, it's because he gets lost in his rage that he applies the hold with added pressure with a kendo stick. It likely costs him the victory in this moment as he's not wrestling under no DQ rules. Trevor's excellent on the opposite side of the spectrum too. His selling in this is so damn good. Part of that is his bleeding from that early chair shot, but also the staggered, punch-drunk physicality he puts behind everything as the match carries on. As with any great bleeder too, when he realizes the cut has begun to close up, he finds an opening to get those juices flowing yet again later on for maximum effect. I especially love how he sells Brad's STF, his face turning blue beneath the red blood, slowly going limp. Just fantastic. I think what I love is that even with the deck stacked so far in Brad's favor, it is Trevor moving beyond his own anger that wins him the day. For example, he's able to retain the instincts to put money in the bank early on with his signature finger break that allows him to create openings for arm work down the stretch. I think if anything, his true winning strategy in this match though harkens back to this simple line in a promo he cut leading up to the match. It's not about being the man, it's about being a man. It's how Trevor treats people outside the competition with respect, with friendship, that ends up winning him the day. Because he's good to CWF Mid-Atlantic, its fans and the people within it, and because Brad Attitude is such a goddamn bastard, Trevor's the one who wins out in the end. Even with my gripes about the finish, there's something real heartening about a good guy being rewarded for treating people well. All in all, this match is a great piece of booking combined with strong, solid execution. It's a match that has a lot going for it and balances those elements to near perfection to produce something truly worthwhile. At its core, it's really just a story of good triumphing over evil. That, combined with the match happening in late December, actually makes this pretty ideal Christmas time viewing. It's got all the feel good trappings one might want from the holiday season. Four and a quarter stars for me. Highly recommended. It's free on YouTube, and I've linked everything in the description below. Check it out. Hi everybody, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. Of course, I want to send a very special thank you to Chris O'Brien for inviting all of us to do this Secret Santo project. And a particular thank you to PWO, the YouTuber, not the forum, for being my Secret Santo and recommending this match to me. It's one I'd seen before, but it was fun uh, revisiting it and remembering so much of what was enjoyable about CWF Mid-Atlantic at the time. And of course, a huge thank you to Sam the VA mod who did the editing for this video. Sam, you are the absolute best. You rock. Thank you so much. And of course, a huge thanks to all my supporters over on Kofi. Thank you to one time supporters in Tim Cook, Doc235, John William, Theo McLeod, The King's Heavenly Road, Matt Medwin, Somiari Tobin, Shoeman, Austin Howe, Thurman, Classy Wrestler, and Jay Finley. 
And a massive thank you to all my monthly supporters in James Draper, Captain Jack Heartless, Eddie Roberts, Jacob Dickens, Chick Fritz, Spiders in My Bed, Timothy R. Buchner, Indelane, Donomatic, Peter Vinison, Kid King Pin, Joe Humphreys, Christopher Jackson, Saltine Daltine, Four Pillars of Hell, Sean Emily, Mason Rollison, Carve Cutter, Jacob VR, Craig Jones, Merch Table Mafia, Clem DK, Suit Coat Man, Ando Commando, Shane, Vibe MD, Christoph, Quentin Besnahard, Christopher Richards, Dom G, Austin Shermer, Ben Rowe, Wrestling Playlist, Woo! Francois De Book, Justin Roberge, Kinch Stalker, and Shane Longoria. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and making it this far into the video. Happy holidays. Enjoy the end of their year, and I'll see you in the next. Have a good one.